I'm the primary author for the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Guidelines following lung cancer surgery. Uh, that's under the auspices of the uh, Enhanced Recovery Society and also the European Society of Thoracic Surgeons. Uh, so people ask what is enhanced recovery um, and it's ultimately it's about getting patients better quicker and how do we do that? Well in terms of physiology we reduce the stress response on the patient to surgery and how are we going to do that? Well as surgeons it's actually standing back a little bit from what we normally do we just operate and we make all these refinements to what we do in the operating room and actually recognizing that that's only maybe three or four hours in the entire patient pathway. Um, so we, what we do is we break down the patient pathway from the moment they have their diagnosis to after they've gone home after their surgery, break that pathway down into its component parts, try and improve each part by a small percentage and then when you put everything back together again then you have a meaningful recovery so uh, people will be familiar with uh, British cycling and other sports and the, the concept of the aggregation of marginal gains that's ex exactly what enhanced recovery is. So we've produced some guidelines um, with authors from all over the world uh, and anaesthetists as well as surgeons um, and made uh, around 45 recommendations on what is current best practice, uh, acknowledging that there are still knowledge gaps. Some of the recommendations from the guidelines might include, uh, well, okay, so what happens when um, someone comes in in the morning of their operation? Uh, conventionally, patients have starved from the night before uh, and then come to the operating room dehydrated, hungry, a bit ratty, um, uh, 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 and that's a, that's a bad start. So it's actually a fallacy that you need to start for surgery. You can actually have uh, water up to about 45 minutes before your operation. Um, but what we've recommended is carbohydrate loading in the, terms of, in, in the form of uh, uh, energy drinks two hours before surgery, and that's been shown to improve patient well-being and reduce insulin resistance and reduce the inflammatory response. So that's one thing, and it makes sense, doesn't it? Because having an operation is like running a marathon. It's a huge impact on your, on your body. And you wouldn't fast uh, just to, 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 to run a marathon the following day. Um, in terms of uh, getting people fit for surgery, so people don't realise that you actually need to be quite strong and robust to have an operation, and often people are told their lung cancer diagnosis and then just sit on the sofa and don't do very much. So it's about patient education, making sure that they stop smoking and they exercise and they get strong. In terms of the surgery itself, um, modern surgical techni techniques, minimal invasive surgery, that surgery appears to play an important part in their recovery. Um, and then after surgery, just reducing the number of tubes and drains someone has in so that they're motivated to get out of bed. And we've shown uh, that early mobilisation uh, is crucial uh, and, uh, and a very important part of their, of their recovery in terms of uh, reducing complications and reducing length of stay.